Now, the Christian Association of Nigeria can says the body will continue to pray for the release of Reverend Polycarp Zango and other people in Boko Haram captivity. According to one of the Khan leaders in the north, Reverend John Hayab, it was the desire of the Khan that they were all released from the Boko Haram den. He described Zango's abduction by Boko Haram terrorists as one too many, stating that the Khan chairman in Michika local government area of Adamawa State, Reverend Lawa Andimi, was abducted and beheaded in a similar fashion in January of this year. So Hayab appealed to President Muhammad Buhari, Governor Lalong of Plateau State, and the security agencies to ensure that Reverend Zango and the other women with him were released in a good time. And joining us live is Reverend Joseph Hayab himself, who is the Khan chairman, and speaking to us from Kaduna State. Good to have you, Reverend Hayab. All right, uh, this new development, let's begin by asking you, um, when you saw that video, what's your reaction or immediate response to that? Well, when first I knew about the missing of Reverend Poli Kavzangu, and we've been praying that uh, wherever he is, we should find him. Then came the video that now showed us that he was not just missing, but he has actually been abducted by Boko Haram, just as they did with Pastor Andeme. Truly speaking, yesterday or the past few days have become another saddest experience to the church in Northern Nigeria, to the church in Nigeria, and especially to Cochin Church. When our pastors travel, we begin to be afraid, are they going to come back? Are they not going to come back? Uh, Zongo just traveled for a program, and this is the story. And we have not forgotten how Andime was actually killed, the brutal way he was killed. And that's why, apart from prayer, we are adding our voice to our appealing to the federal government, appealing to the state government where he is serving, or where he was serving before he was adopted, and even appealing to Boko Haram that, look, you are kidnapping innocent people. Our pastors have not offended you. We, have not, we are not part of your crisis. Please release Zango. Let him come back to his family. Release those other women that you adopted with him. This thing is getting out of hand. And the federal government, especially the security agency, must do something about it. Because now we are coming back to a new fear. Remember, we are just about to go into November, towards Christmas month. This was what happened towards the end of last year. Many people were kidnapped, as it has just been done, and some killed early in the year. So whatever the government can do, please, we are appealing that you should do it. Our job is to pray. We are not an enforcement agent, but we can pray and put pressure and make appeal. And that's what we are doing now. All right, um, Reverend um, Hayab, uh, of course, uh, first of all, I, I would um, express condolences and uh, say uh, sorry entirely um, f for this current situation. It's, it's uh, heart-wrenching. Um, but I want to ask um, for uh, Khan in, in, in uh, Kaduna State and, of course, across the whole northern uh, Nigeria, um, what ideas have you know you been able to come up with? You just mentioned that you cannot enforce; you can mostly just pray. Um, are there other ideas for people on ground who are closer to you know these um, um, uh, the places where these things happen? Have there been other ideas that they've shared that you know might help save uh, the pastor uh, Polycap uh, Zango? Um, and also, has there been any um, word of negotiation? Have, have, uh, the, have uh, his abductors mentioned anything at all since he was taken? Well, you know, as I said, initially we thought he was just missing. And we were putting his pictures and stories all over our social media platform and asking people to pray. And in case whether he had an accident somewhere and anybody is aware, they should get in touch with us. Then came this video from Boko Haram confirming that he has not, he is not just missing, but he is in their custody. Uh, I think one of the most challenging things is saying this is what we are doing. Uh, if we say this is what we are doing, is it really good for our safety and the safety of the pastors generally in northern Nigeria and the Christians in a media house like this? 
But one thing we know, or a few things we know we have been doing is to sensitize ourselves. Because of the terrain, because of the challenge we are facing, we've been speaking to our pastors to understand where to go, when to go, and what must not necessarily be. Some journeys and some activities that we are doing, we have to really look at them. But we also consign that we must not give in to fear because of uh, the terrorist activities and we abandon our faith activities. That will not also be a good testimony of us. So, you see, we are now having a challenge. Uh, some decisions we want to take, we are also careful not to take a decision that will discourage active and strong activities of faith. But we have to think inward and also advise ourselves in-house to know what to do on certain programs. At the moment, it is a confirmed situation that many parts of northern Nigeria are not safe for our pastors. So we either think right and behave right, or we continue to go to places because we want to hold our spiritual activities and get ourselves into this kind of situation. So we have to think right of what to do, and we are discussing among ourselves, but at the moment it's not what I'm going to begin to scream at it or say it out in public, but we really need to pray and we really need to reassess our activities and the areas we go to do activities as pastors since we cannot guarantee safety with what is going on. Uh, this is not just among pastors, even members have been abducted, but we know that Boko Haram even abduct other Nigerians who are not uh, Christians, but they seem to celebrate if they actually get a pastor or a Christian so that it will make a big headline. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's quite a, a tough one there, uh, as, even as you speak to us. Can you describe for us the mood uh, of the Christian community, you know, there, especially his immediate family members? Are you in touch with them? Uh, what are their reactions uh, fr from this new video as well? That Let surfaced? me be honest with you. I'm just being strong to speak with you, but... Uh, I could just be crying, but uh, I can imagine if I, as a man, as a pastor, with over 25 years of pastoral experience, feel this way, what will be the feelings of his wife? What will be the feelings of his children? What will be the feelings of his members who listen to him every week, who he preach and pray for? You can imagine what will be the feeling of the leadership of Corking Church in Nigeria. But we have to be strong uh, Jesus never promised us that everything is going to be rosy, uh, sweet. We do know that in, in, in our faith in Jesus Christ will be a, a trial, and part of this trial is what Reverend Zongo is going through. But we are praying that his experience will not be like that of Pastor Andy May. We pray that God will do something. We pray that government will do something. We pray that even the, the Boko Haram themselves will think and change their mind and allow this man and those women to come back. The fact about it is that, you, you know, you can imagine the fear it is creating. There's something I must say here, that today not many people are willing to take up certain pastoral job, especially in certain areas of northern Nigeria. Many of our churches are pastorless because people are just feeling, when you go, you may not come back. When you go, nobody knows what is going to happen. Even if you are strong enough and you want to go, your family members will put pressure on you and ask you not to go. You can see what the church is facing. So you have to be strong. You have to refuse to listen to some people. You have to say, look, I'm convinced God is with me, but how many family members will listen to you when you say those things? And for leaders of church, I know what the Khan president is going through. I know what other Khan leaders are going through, uh, chairman of Khan in various states. The fact is that if you know the number of calls I receive when these kind of stories come around, uh, there's nothing really you can do. Unfortunately, we have sometimes government don't even understand. When we cry out like this, they assume we are only just raising an alarm. Here are realities of life. I was recently being confronted by someone who asked me, uh, why did you say that so so number of Christians were kidnapped and money was spent? I say, oh, what a minute. I am not a novice. I did a thorough investigation. I, saw, I gave out to over 1,500 churches questionnaires to tell us what is happening. Have anybody in their church been kidnapped? Was a pastor kidnapped? Was anybody killed? How much did they pay? Before we came up with those statistics, we are not just saying it to embarrass the government. We are saying reality of what we are facing. Now here is one. Can you also say it is just a false alarm? This is reality. We didn't even know where the man was until Boko Haram now placed his video out. And we, like any other Nigerian, get to know that our missing brother is with them. This is what the church is facing. So I appeal to Nigerian Christians all over, please pray for the church in northern Nigeria. 
stand with the church in northern Nigeria, and I'm feeling with the government that, look, don't allow this to be, a, to be politicized. This is a serious matter. It's a matter of life and death. We chose to follow Jesus willingly, and we are going to follow him, whatever may be the situation. But we must not be facing this kind of thing every day because it destroys our trust in our government. It also begins to create suspicion in the way things are happening around us. I don't want us to live in such fear. So if there's anything government can do, let her do it and do it openly and honestly to show that she is really serious to ensure that no Nigerian pastor, no Nigerian Christian is killed by Boko Haram again. Um, I'm going to ask about, um, because I'm really just thinking solutions, solutions, solutions. You've mentioned um, your call on the government to please act you know, at a time like this and um, find ways to save uh, this man's life. Um, so two things I'm going to ask now, because this has really just rocked my morning completely. Um, but I want to ask about um, something you also mentioned, and that, that is the uh, ransom that is paid. Um, is, is there, has there been a culture, you know, like that in northern Nigeria of people being kidnapped and um, they pay ransoms, you know, before they are released uh, so that maybe we can hope that it might be a similar situation with uh, Polycarp. Uh, and second is, um, how does it make you feel when the government um, says, well, Bukharam has been defeated or has been technically you know, defeated? Um, what is the reality um, um, from, your, from your perspective? Let me start with the last question. The reality is Boko Haram have been technically given a better space to operate, not defeated. I think when we use the word defeated, we are trying to say what is not real. And it will hurt the feelings of families that are still victims of this unfortunate kidnapping that is going on. Boko Haram is still having a field day in some part of northern Nigeria. Let's still go out there and do the best we know how to do. We do commend soldiers. We do commend our army or military for what they are doing. But let's not say things that are not real. Let's not say things that are unfounded. Boko Haram are still having the appeal day, kidnapping, collecting ransom. And the, last, the other question you did ask is true. We've actually paid ransom at a point we were so worried about this payment of ransom, and we told our people that no more ransom should be paid. But here you are, you are in a fix. When you, uh, the day I actually came out publicly, if you Google, you'll find that and say, churches should no longer pay ransom. The challenge I face is that if it is your wife, will you allow them to kill her? just because you don't want us to pay ransom. If it is your child, will you allow, us to kill, uh, allow them to kill him? So, you know, as a leader now, you put yourself in a piece. But truly, I know that we have to find a way of stopping paying ransom. But we are talking about life and death here. We are talking about a family member who is about to be killed. I have had experience with this Boko Haram, so I'm not picking up the children of Ingrema school, school in Kaduna. What they will do is that they will put up a call, a call across to the family, and you will hear them beating the person, hitting him. He is screaming, do something and save me. Do something and save me. What will you do? As much as you don't want to pay ransom, you will have sympathy on that person. You don't want your brother to be beaten. You don't want your brother to, to die. Look, I remember one other pastor that I was involved. The fact that when he came back, I brought him to Kaduna and kept him in hospital for over one week because of the beatings. It is just beating. They will beat them. A, a big, uh, an adult will cry like a baby, asking for help. So in such situation, as much as we don't want to pay uh, uh, ransom, you have to just sympathize with the other person. That's why we are appealing to government. Let's not even allow them to have a few days to be asking for ransom. Let's go after them. They should be on the run. They should not be even having a good space that they are demanding for ransom. Yesterday, let me put it there. Yesterday, yesterday, one of the calls I got from one church in Kaduna is an elder. One elder, Audu, has been kidnapped. The fact, boy, that they asked for 20 million and they have been negotiating to 2.5 and they are threatening that they will kill. As I'm speaking to you, Audu is not yet back. He was kidnapped between Kachia and Kaduna in Kaduna State. This is the reality we are facing. But what will we do? The family cry out, we don't also have the money. Uh, how do we do? Every day we just keep praying, 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 praying believing that God will do something. When we have a government that God has instituted them, because my Bible says we should obey governing authority because God placed them for our own good. Government do what is right and don't allow 
these evil people to have a free day and torment family and mm -hmm. cause us the kind of grief we are going through. So okay. it, truly we've been paying ransom, but we, want, we don't want to pay it, but how will you do when people are in such pain and are crying to you? All right, you Reverend John, um, we, we you hear you. Unfortunately, uh, this is all that we can take in the interest of time. We hope that uh, some sort of soccer or solution will come you know, to Reverend uh, John Hayab and the Christian community there. Thank you so very much for your time. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.